Hey VCA kids, let's check out this month's Bible verse. For he views the ends of the earth and sees everything under the heavens. Job 28 verse 24. Now let's read it together. For he views the ends of the earth and sees everything under the heavens. Job 28 verse 24. Here's this month's big truth. Does God know everything? Yes, God is in charge. He is sovereign over all things in heaven and on earth. Here's this month's big question. Good morning, guys. Today is our Sunday that we answer our big question. And our question comes from our friends, Philip, Micah, Anna, and James. And their question is, does God love Satan? You know, Satan used to once be called Lucifer and he had an angelical heart and he was a beautiful angel. He was created by God. God created Lucifer with all kinds of instruments in his body and all the worship will go through him so God can be glorified. But then he sinned against God. Pride entered his heart and Lucifer wanted to become like God. Does that story sound familiar to you? Yes, because he tried to do the same thing with Adam and Eve when he told them that if he ate from the fruit that God told them not to, they will become like God. And unfortunately, Eve fell into his life and men sinned against God too. Well, because of pride entering in Lucifer's heart, he was cast out of God's presence and with him all the fallen angels who now are demons. See, Lucifer represents everything that God hates. If we read in John 10.10, 10, says that Satan is a thief who comes to steal, kill, and destroy. In 1 Peter 5.8 says that he is our enemy. Matthew 6.13 says that he's the father of lies and a murderer. John 844 says that he is the accuser of God's people. See, ever since he was cast out of heaven, Satan has always tried to come against God's creation to keep him from worshiping God and believing in him. The answer to your question, does God love Satan? The answer is no. In Revelation 12, 10, if you want to read it, tells you the future that God has for Satan. And trust me, there is no love in that future. You know that the judgment that God is going to have for Satan is actually for the love that he has for us. So no, the answer to your question is no. God does not love Satan. 
Once again, he represents everything that God hates and everything that God is not. I love you guys and I cannot wait to hug you and see you next Sunday. Bye. Now it's time for little moments with the big God. Good morning and hello from mi casa to your casa. I am very sad that we don't get to meet in person this Sunday, but for us it's very important that you guys stay safe and healthy. Please join us to pray for the Quintana family, Pastor Gabe, Pastor Cecilia, Matthias, Abram, and Judah, so they can recover and be healed fast so we can all be together again. But now, let's see what our friends and heroes have in store for us. I'll see you at the end of this episode. armies of the great Roman Empire conquered all before them, even my home, the port of Alexandria in Egypt. When I grew up there, everyone called me Mackey. The city was full of secrets and intrigue. The governor, fearful that the Jewish rebellion in nearby Judea would spread, ordered a crackdown on the Jews and Christians. But my friends and I never gave in. We shared the stories of our people's heroes, and soon we became heroes too. Time to play. I have to help get ready for the Passover dinner. But I want you to help me. I need to practice the four questions. Tonight's my first time. You don't need any more practice. We've been doing this all day. Please. <sighs> all right. First question. Why is this night different from all the other nights? Why on all other nights do we eat either bread or matzah? But on this night, we eat only matzah. Perfect. See? You'll do fine. Now you have to answer. Me? You'll be leading one of these dinners someday. Now answer, or don't you know? <sighs> okay. We eat only matzah because when the Jews left slavery in Egypt, there wasn't time to finish baking the bread, so they took it out of the oven while it was still flat. That's what matzah is, and... I got it! I've got it. Portia! Hello, Leah. Everyone, thank you for inviting me. <laughs> we couldn't have this dinner without you. You're like family now. But uh, please, introduce your friend. Oh, I'm sorry. This is my tutor, Lydia. <gasps> Here's another one for you. <clears throat> Rebecca! I know that lady! How could you? She works at the palace. And why are you whispering? Because she's bad. She's the one who grabbed me off the street and made me work on the loom in that sweatshop. Leah, this lady is Portia's teacher. You heard Portia say so herself. Maybe she just looks like that other woman. It's very nice to finally meet Portia's new friends. And the Passover holiday might never have happened if it hadn't been for the burning bush. The burning bush? Portia, it's a great story. See, Moses was born a Jew and then adopted by an Egyptian princess when he was a baby. But remember, he had to run away to Midian when he was a young man. Moses got married there and became a shepherd. Then, one day, he saw a bush that was burning. Yet its leaves and branches weren't consumed by the fire. That's peculiar. I wonder why the bush isn't burning up. Take your sandals off. The ground you are standing on 
is holy. I have seen how brutally my people are being treated in Egypt. I am sending you back to rescue them. Who am I? I... I'm not the one to do it. I will be with you. Tell the people I am. The god of their fathers has sent you. They will never listen to me. What is that in your hand? Throw it on the ground. Grab it by the tail. Now put your hand inside your shirt. Now put it back inside your shirt. But I'm no good at speaking. I never know what to say. Who makes people speak in the first place? Is it not I? Go. I will be your mouth. I will be with you when you speak. But that's not the end of the story. In a way, it's just the beginning. Then let's start the meal. I have a feeling some of us are getting hungry. Leah, are you waiting for a special invitation? I think Leah has a problem with Lydia. Hmm, I can see that too. Let's get back to our story. Our people were badly treated in Egypt. They had to work very hard and were beaten by their masters. One man, Moses, went to Pharaoh, the Egyptian ruler. Let my people go. We must hold a special festival. Let us go far into the desert. Our God will make terrible things happen if you do not let us go. At first, Pharaoh said no and made things even more difficult for our people. They're just lazy. No, they will not go. Make them work harder. You've just given them the chance they wanted. Now we're dead men. But then, all kinds of strange things began to happen to the Egyptians. Nine different disasters occurred. But our people were not touched by any of them. And still, Pharaoh would not give in. Every one of you must borrow as much gold and silver from your Egyptian neighbors as you can. Tonight, a terrible sickness will sweep the cities. It will reach even the palace. And then what happened? <gasps> and then all our food burned up because I forgot to check it. I'll do it. Don't you, Leah? You're the lady who made me work at that loom. And you're lucky you're not still there. But if you say so much as a word about it to anyone, you'll go right back. And this time, you won't be alone. I'll take Rebecca, Mackie, everyone. Do you understand? Good. Everything's fine in the kitchen, Diana. Samuel? Oh, uh, where was I? 
Ah, the, the uh, sickness in Egypt. It, it passed over the Jewish families. And that's how this holiday got its name. Passover. Kill a lamb. Smear blood on the sides of your doors. Stay indoors all night. Eat the lamb. Get ready to move out. The sickness will pass through every Egyptian house. If you put the lamb's blood on your door, it will miss your family. The eldest son in every Egyptian household suddenly died, including Pharaoh's. If they stay here, we'll all be dead. Get out from among my people. They traveled far, guided by a column of cloud by day and a column of fire by night. But not long after they left their homes in Egypt, Pharaoh changed his mind. Don't panic. Stand firm, everyone. God will rescue us. See that Egyptian army over there? We'll never see it again. God is on our side. We have only to stand our ground. A fierce east wind began to blow, driving the waters back. crossed on dry land. Suddenly, the wind dropped. The waters rushed back to normal. to the Egyptian soldiers. They were swept away. This is what you remember at Passover? Yes, and that we must trust God to give us our freedom, even if it means leaving behind all we've ever known. We have a problem. One of the little girls we had working at our looms, she recognized me at... <laughs> Will you please stop stuffing your face and pay attention? My dear Lydia, this is not important enough to interrupt my breakfast. What can some little ragamuffin do to us? Plenty. The girl is a friend of our esteemed governor's niece. If she tells Portia about our little scheme and Portia tells the governor, what do you think the governor will do to us? <laughs> Leah, you haven't said anything since yesterday. Is... is something wrong? She thinks Portia's teacher is the one who made her work at the loom. I told her it couldn't be. You don't know. You weren't there. Uh, coming! You don't have to knock down the door. Let me in! Tony, we have to hide! <gasps> that took you long enough. You're not trying to hide anything or anyone, are you? We've got nothing to hide, sir. We were just sitting down to Passover dinner. Hmm. 
I see some empty places, but you insist you're not hiding anyone. Say, a little girl of about six? Uh, uh, sir, the empty chairs are a, a Passover tradition. They're for strangers who might wander by. Strangers like yourself. You should join us. Sit and eat. I don't have time for... Mmm. <laughs> well, uh, maybe just a bite or two. Uh, help yourself. Mm. 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 Good. Sir, did you find the girl? Uh, no. Did you look under the table? The, the table? Fine idea. Do it. Yes, go. Another Passover tradition, sir. The washing of the hands. And face. Ah, ah, I can't see. What are you doing? Stop it! Ah, that's enough of that. Uh, nobody down here, sir. Have to hide! Have to hide! Well, it sounds like you do have something to hide after all. Have to hide! Have to hide! Got you now. Ah. Have to hide! Have to hide! Ah. Pontius will talk some more if you give him a cracker. Cracker! Ah, cracker! Cracker! Let's go, Bruticus! This isn't over yet. Leah, Rebecca, you can come out now. Pontius, you get all the crackers you want. Cracker! <laughs> cracker! <laughs> you haven't paid your taxes in weeks, Moab. Please, sir. I just don't have the money. There might be a way to solve your little problem. There might? I want you to do a little favor for me. It involves a neighbor of yours. Samuel the Silversmith. This Samuel always seems to be at the center of trouble. And, and it can't be just coincidence. I'm beginning to think Samuel and his family are rebels. And you, my good friend, are going to help me prove it. Surely a good citizen of the Empire such as yourself has noticed the many unusual goings-on at Samuel's. No, I, I really haven't seen anything going on. Wrong answer! Especially from someone who wishes to get back on my good side! There, there might have been a few things. Maybe. I thought there might. Here's what you're going to do for me. You're going to go to Samuel and tell him to give this pouch of gold to the rebels to help their cause. When Samuel takes it from you, it will prove that he's in league with the rebels. The gold, of course, is secretly marked. And when I catch him with it, I'll arrest him and, and his whole family. But, but Samuel has been a good neighbor to me for years. If he's really such a fine fellow, he won't take the gold, will he? <laughs> Portia, you're late for class, again. And just because we're friends, it doesn't mean you can avoid your lesson whenever you want. Sorry, Lydia, but this is serious. Portia? Hiya, hiya! Portia! Tobias, what's going on? Portia just rode out of here like Pluto himself was chasing her. I have no idea what you're talking about. I'm talking about our little problem. Have you solved it yet? Because if I get caught, your name will be the first one out of my mouth. Sounds like a threat. <sighs> it is a threat. Well then, I can solve part of the problem right now. Guards! Bruticus! What are you doing? 
take this woman out of here. She's out of control. She, she's, she's ripped my tunic. Uh, you, you, you can't do this to me. Send her to the mines, men. Uh, and don't go, listen to a word she says. She's let just go. babbling. Portia, what's the big hurry? I need to talk to Samuel. He's right inside. Mackie? Yes? I have to ask you something, and you've got to tell me the truth. Sure. What? You and your family. Ah, uh, are you rebels? Yes. Mola! Uh, come in. I... I need to talk to you. Is something wrong, Moab? Toadie knows all about you. He knows you helped the rebels. He asked me to get the evidence he needs to arrest you. He's been taking money from me for months. And now, he's got me spying on my neighbors, my friends. But you, Samuel, you're the one who could sneak me out of Alexandria and away from Toadie. All my savings are in here. If you help me, this is all yours. I'd help you if I could, but I can't. Take it, please. Everyone, stand as you are. What's the meaning of this? Take your hands off him. I... I couldn't get him to take the gold. Yeah. I don't know how you knew we were watching, but one of these days, you'll make a mistake. And when you do, I'll get you! All of you! They're gone. You can come out now. Thank you, Portia. You took a great risk telling me about Moab. You are my friends. And you've been a good friend to us, even though we helped the rebels. It's going to be dangerous for you, dear. I can handle Toadie. It's easy. It won't always be. Sit down, all of you. You need to hear this. Jesus and his friends used to gather together. They would eat and tell stories. They were a happy group. They were always on the move and stayed with friends wherever they went. But the Romans and their spies were always watching them. After three years, Jesus knew that he would soon be arrested and put on trial. It was the week of Passover. He and his friends met together for a special supper. Suddenly Jesus did something new. He did something different when he said grace. I am giving myself up for you. Eat this to remember me. After they finished the meal, Jesus took his cup, gave thanks, then gave it to his friends. This is the last time that we are going to be together. I am going to die. Drink this and remember me then many people everywhere will know that God loves them. Afterwards, Jesus was arrested, brought to the Roman governor, Pilate. Pilate then handed him over to the soldiers who led him away to be killed. Jesus' friend Peter never forgot that last time he had supper with Jesus. And we can't either. The special times we meet together to eat bread and drink wine tell the story of Jesus. These are our last days in Alexandria. We are no longer safe here. It's time to leave. Wow. 
Fear could be very real in our lives, right? And it's not a very good feeling when we feel fear inside of us. You know, I've learned that it's three kinds of fears. The fear of the Lord, the fear of this world, and the fear that comes from trauma. Trauma, just like Leah. She was kidnapped by this lady and she was being enslaved to work for free. So whenever she saw that lady, she had that feeling again come upon her, that fear. And then her sister didn't believe her that that was the same lady that kidnapped her. And that could be very scary. I had a, a trauma that caused fear in, in my life, just like Leah. You know, when I moved here from Mexico, I only spoke Spanish. And so I had to learn how to speak English. And kids at school used to make fun of me because I could say the words incorrectly or I had a big accent. I still do and I'm still learning it. But God in His amazing love helped me overcome that fear. And He helped me understand that I was actually very blessed because I was able to speak two languages, Spanish and English. God can also help you overcome your fears. What are your fears? Where do they come from? Are you afraid of the things that happen around this world? like COVID, tornadoes, and so many other things that we're exposed to because we live here in this earth. Or what caused trauma in your life that brought fear into your heart. You know, Proverbs 9.10 says that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge of the Holy One and His understanding. The fear of the Lord is not something bad. When God wants to want us to have fear in our hearts towards Him is just to have understanding of what is good and what is bad. And having fear of doing what's bad is going to actually protect us from sinning against God and from consequences, bad consequences in our lives. Like if you break the law, bad consequences are going to happen to you. Or if you disobey your parents, bad consequences are going to happen to you. Or if you don't do your homework, bad consequences are going to happen to you. And God wants you to know that He loves you. And if you do what is right, He is going to protect you. And He is going to help you overcome those fears. The Word of God also says in 2 Timothy 1.7, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and sound mind. God has given you and I a, a, a spirit of power and, and sound mind and love to help us overcome those fears so we can be strong, so we can be bold and encouraged to not allow those fears to take control of our lives and stop us from doing great things that God has called us to do. I love you guys and I cannot wait to see you next Sunday. Bye! Club 56 what's good okay so today we're gonna do a full chapter now you're gonna have to read the chapter in order to get these questions but we're doing first Samuel chapter 17 the story of David and Goliath I wouldn't go off of memory on this one you're gonna need to read it here are the questions I'm gonna give you four questions like we do in the class and I'm gonna need you to give me those answers next week not this Sunday you're seeing this this Sunday next Sunday you're gonna need to come with these answers and we're gonna do fire hose style, that way we can get through it and get through the lesson that we have for next Sunday, actually. So the first question is, in the story of David and Goliath, who was the champion? Second question, what were the weapons used? Third question, there was a thief in this story. May have been more than one. What did they steal? Who was the thief? Last one. Tell me an example of when somebody tries to give you something they don't want and they think it's good for you anyway. For example, uh, Saul tried to put on his armor on David. David was too small. He said it was weighing him down. So... I need an example in your real life of somebody who tries to put something on you or give something to you that you don't want, but they say it's good for you. All examples are submissive. All of these will be point totals. So make sure that you get your answers right. I'll see you next time. And we'll see you a week from Sunday. Come on, somebody. Remember, God plus kids equals big things. See you next week.